the key thing here is the energy inside of money. Our relationship to money is going to determine our experience of money. In this video, we're gonna talk about money. And sorry if it's a little hard to hear, I figured it might be worth it to do this intro from the Bahamas here so you can enjoy the scenery. We're gonna talk about money because it's something that has a grip on most people. So in this video, I'm gonna break down what I was pretending money meant about myself personally, and then in general, how we make money meaningful. See, the issue isn't the presence of or lack of money. The main issue is our relationship to the presence of or lack of money. And when you're able to shift that for yourself and for your clients, you're gonna be able to give people a freedom that most people just don't have. So listen to this whole conversation, it's really deep, and it might just give you the emotional and financial breakthrough that you've been looking for. When we do belief work around money, it's messy. It's messy because, because it, it, there's so many different things, there's so many different conversations, right? So a lot of people, like when we get into belief work, we have beliefs around relationships, we have beliefs around our body, we have beliefs around the world, we have all these beliefs in so many of the other areas, generally the other areas, the beliefs are clean. And what I mean by that is, if you have a belief around relationships, all your beliefs are around relationships, about relationships. If you have beliefs around uh, business, beliefs around politics, beliefs around race, beliefs around your body, beliefs around spirituality, if you have all these beliefs, it's usually inside that conversation and it stays relatively clean. But beliefs around money is not clean because your beliefs around money could actually be beliefs about yourself. Your beliefs around money could actually be beliefs about religion. Your beliefs around money could actually be a sum of all kinds of other beliefs that are just making their way into your environment of money. And so it's not a clean conversation for so many people. A lot of times your money blueprint and the, the foundation that you're working with is actually not even just in your life. It's based on generations above you and before you because our beliefs get passed on from generation to generation. And so one of the reasons that a lot of people really struggle with money is because their beliefs, our beliefs around money are, are not clear. And that's one of the reasons also why we hear solutions, but we get frustrated by a lot of the solutions because we hear other people's solutions and we can't fit our problems into their perspective or we can't solve our problems with their solutions because the way other people solve their money solutions or money problems rather might not apply to us because it's so messy. The issue that a lot of people have is not actually money related, but it's the love of money and it's the worshiping of the dirty paper. It's what we make it mean. So for the longest time, money, I just equated this for me today, at least this succinctly, money equaled manhood for me. If I had money, then that means I was a man because part of being a man is providing. Part of being a man is protecting and being able to protect with money, having resources, being able to protect my family. Part of being a man is performing. So if I'm performing in the money category, well then I'm a man. So for all of you that don't resonate with that, you're a woman or you're a man, but money hasn't necessarily equaled manhood. What does money mean to you? What has money meant to you? Maybe money has meant you are doing a good job. Maybe money has meant that you're winning. Maybe money has meant that you're useful. You know, yesterday we talked about the unhealthy connection between person and performance. Well, money is a form of performance. We perform in our business, we perform in our jobs, and we get rewarded. And if the reward is money, then it's a direct result of our performance. And so then, if our performance is connected to our self-esteem and our value, well now money is connected to our value as a person. And that's extremely dangerous because we don't fully control 
money. Unless you have a money machine, unless you can print money on demand, money is not 100% in your control. You can only control what you do and then money comes as a result of what you do. So when we have our self-esteem attached to something we can't control, money being one of them, when our self-esteem is attached to something we can't control, then we are inherently unstable. So for me, a lot of times for many years, if I had a lot of money in my personal account, if I had a lot of money in my business account, then I felt good about myself and that energy determined how I maneuvered in the world, how I showed up for my family. But if I didn't have a lot of money, I took it to mean that I was failing as a man, I was failing as a dad, I was failing as a husband, so I would show up in these environments as a failure. And then I wasn't bringing forth what I wanted to bring forth in terms of my energy. And it affected my actions. It affected my relationships, not just with my wife and with my kids, but my relationships with friends, my relationships on social media. I mean, it affected everything because it affected the way I felt about myself. And then when we get into that place of being wounded, and, and this wound was completely self-inflicted, when I feel wounded as a man, because of money, then my wound will usually try to solve itself with money. Because I think that money is the problem, then I also think that money is the solution. And that's just me seeing through the blood of my wounds. And when I think the problem is the solution, now the, the best I can do is just create a cycle that can keep me occupied, but not fulfilled. And that's the cycle that so many people are on. Now, I'm not saying that everybody who has money is not fulfilled, but people who are chasing money for their, for their fulfillment are not fulfilled because money will never equal your fulfillment. And one of the ways I know this, one of the ways that we usually check why people are driven or not driven by certain things is, was it always this way? Once upon a time, you weren't driven by money because you didn't know what money is. Once upon a time, you had no construct of money. And then when you were two, three, four, maybe you started playing with money. Maybe you started playing games that involve money or your parents started talking to you about money or somebody else started talking to you about money. And then when you got a little bit older, you started to maybe see a little bit of the value of money because if you had a couple bucks, you could go to the store and buy some candy. Or if you had a little bit of money, you could save up and, and buy a toy. That's when money became valuable to you. And then probably as you got to be 10, 11, 12, and you actually maybe started to do some chores and stuff, and you actually started to feel and, and collect some money and do things with the money, now you started to feel the power of money. And that's not necessarily power over other people, although in our society, it has become that for a lot of people. It's the power of, I never thought of it this way, the power of agency. Money gives you agency. Agency is your ability to make choices. Agency is an independence of thinking and an independence of choices. So if you have agency, that means you could do some things. You could do some things with your life. You can do some things like buying toys. You can, you can manipulate and influence your experience of life with more money. And all of that is True, there's nothing wrong with money, there's nothing wrong with having it, and, and money primarily does give you agency, it does give you a little bit more choice. But the key thing here is the energy inside of money. Our relationship to money is going to determine our experience of money. And that's different than whether we have money or don't have money. A lot of people don't need a whole lot of money and they can have a really healthy experience, not just of money, but a healthy experience of life. A lot of people can have a tremendous amount of money and not have a healthy experience of the money or a healthy experience of life. So the amount of money does not and should not equate to our experience on the planet. It's our relationship to it and our relationship to our ability to make money. There's money being exchanged, like trillions of dollars being exchanged every single day. So money is all around us. It's not about whether we individually can make money. 
It's about our resourcefulness in the conversation of money. There are plenty of people right now who would pay you for what you're able to do, who would pay you for what you're able to teach. Plenty of people right now. The question is, have you set yourself up to generate the money that is important to you? And there's nothing wrong with focusing on money. Here's the thing though, money can be a focus, it just can't be the fuel. For almost all of us, money cannot be the fuel. And here's how I know. Most of us are focused on it and most of us are not making it the way we wanna make it when we're focused on it. And that goes for anybody who's got this energy around money. And let me know if you're the kind of person, similar to me, that when you focus on money and try to motivate yourself with money, it doesn't work. You know that you can make money. You know that you can go out and, and do some things online or you can go out and, and, uh, and out into the world and, and do whatever it is you gotta do to make money, but focusing on the money, focusing on the money you have or don't have, focusing on what it is that you wanna do with the money, from a tangible perspective, it just doesn't work. If that's you, then let me know. Because most of us operate that way. At least most of the people that I'm around, most of the people that are attracted to me and I'm attracted to don't operate that way. So it cannot be the fuel in the car. And one of the reasons for that is because money is a construct, at least money as power, is a construct of the intellectual mind. Again, it didn't mean anything to us for probably the first 10 to 12 years of our life. So it's constructed after we've already tried to figure out what abandonment is and what love is and what safety is. After we've figured out all of these foundational things of our life, then we learn about this thing called money and it makes its way into all of these human foundational emotions and that's why it gets messy and that's why it gets really challenging for us. So if you are focusing on money and it's not, in, it, it, it's not uh, igniting you, then that means you're like most of us. Money cannot be the fuel that you motivate yourself and really inspire yourself to go after. Money needs to be the product of you doing what you love to do. So we need to go from the love of money to the money of love. The love of money to the money of love. When you focus on what you love, money is a byproduct of that. And for most of us, as cliche as it may sound in the personal development world now, it's true. For most of us, the fuel needs to be service. The fuel can't be gaining something. When we focus on getting something, either money or getting something with the money, when we focus on how we will personally benefit, we don't have the fuel to overpower our emotional obstacles usually. But... When we focus on serving, then we see the money as a way to fuel the service. And we know that the money is a byproduct of the service. So my question to you is this, what if the new currency going forward is love? What if that is the new currency of our new society? A society that was already going to evolve, but now with this pandemic, that, that evolution is speeding up. What if Money is the new currency that most people will care about going forward. And if you think about currency, you know, there's a, there's a scientific definition of it. A current is the energy that flows through something. So what if love was the energy that flows through us? And we don't just hoard us. We don't hoard the energy. We don't hoard the money. We don't hoard the love. We give it away freely and abundantly. And one of the things that happens with science is the more that a currency flows, whether we're talking about like a current of a water or, or a current of energy, the more that something flows, the more powerful it gets. And so what if we built up this powerful currency of love and the more that we got it, the more that we gave it, the more that we get it, the more that we give it, then that will generate this powerful energetic force and then now trust me i am not saying 
Don't focus on the money. Don't make sure that you've got money coming in. We need money to survive. Our families need money. Our businesses need money. The things that we want in our lives require money to a large degree. The things that we need and the things that we want. So money is not bad at all. We just need to heal the relationship and then invite it, invite it in in a way that fuels us. So you can absolutely have strategies to make money. You can be smart with your money. You can have, if you're in business, you can have ways that, that bring people in and, and give you money for products or for services. All of that stuff is not being taken away. It's just that love and, and truth and sharing your message and doing the thing that lights you up in the world needs to be the fuel. And then watch this, the amount of money you make will be a function of how committed you are to your purpose. What if you, we really took that in and just looked at the amount of money that's coming in as a measurement of how committed we are to our purpose? Because the more that we're committed to the thing that lights us up and things that, that, that brings passion out of us, that's the thing that's probably the most valuable anyway. So as we dive into our passion-filled purpose, we are putting our highest value out into the world, which means we're going to get more of our financial value back in return. The other piece about the, the word currency is the root word is current. And that has a flow scientifically like I was talking about, but it also has a presence, current. What are you seeing currently? When we focus on money, we tend to focus into the future because we're afraid of losing it out there or we're trying to motivate ourselves by getting it out there. And what we sacrifice so often is the current moment. We sacrifice the current moment because we're focused on the future money. And I don't know about you, but I imagine this is true for pretty much all of you. The current moment is actually more valuable than the future money. But when we let the mind put too much value on the future money, then we sacrifice the current moment. And that's one of the reasons why when we get to that money, if we ever do get to that money, the current moment is lost anyway. What's the point? So it's a hollow achievement because the thing that brings us fulfillment in our life, which is currency, the ability to be current and currently see what's going on in our life is sacrificed the way most of us are chasing money. So what is it that brings you so much joy and passion that you can't not do? That thing is probably going to be the most financially valuable thing for you. However, you gotta earn your money. When you are changing, or exchanging rather, the thing that you're meant to do for money, you have to give a lot more in the beginning especially, before you start to receive. But then, once you start to receive, then that can become exponential. But it all starts with what actually drives you. And if you try to take, literally like with your car, if you try to take a bunch of dollar bills or a bunch of hundreds or a bunch of whatever denominations of money you have and go ahead and put them in the fuel tank of your car and see how far it goes. You could put a million dollars in the fuel tank of your car. You're not going anywhere. You're not leaving the parking lot because that's not what that car is fueled by. And for most of us, money is not what this soul is fueled by. Not fueled or, f I'm trying to put fuel in fulfilled. It's not, we're not fueled by it and we're not fulfilled by it. Maybe we're not fuel filled by it or full fueled by it. I don't know, I was trying to go too far there. But we're not fueled by it and we're not fulfilled by it. That's why so many of us have such a negative relationship to it. And the more emphasis we put on it, the more pressure we put on ourselves to make it. And especially in the world of sharing your passion and your purpose, the worst thing you can do, one of the worst things at least, is to squash the sacred passion of your work with the intellectual pressure of making money. Passion is going to be killed with pressure. The passion from our soul will constantly be stifled by the pressure from our minds. 
if we allow it. So we need to protect our passion and we need to protect our purpose and we need to stop pretending that making money is the reason that we're doing anything. It's the reason that we're living or the reason that we're doing anything. And that's the way to light us up by passion and in the process create strategies and systems to monetize that. But it has to be the byproduct. Now, if you liked this video, check out that video where I break down with specifics how to make $45,000 a year or more as a coach. To make $45,000 as a coach, if you divide that by 12, you get $3,750 per month.